Welcome to Talk Movie to Me, a weekly podcast where we do a deep dive on a new release that just hit theaters or streaming. I'm Helen. And I'm Miss Sinclair. Edison can't be with us today because he is still traveling. Uh, as we mentioned last episode, he spent some time in Mexico. He's somewhere else right now or coming home from somewhere. I don't know. He's out in the Who world. Who knows where that man is? Yeah, he's out in the world having fun. Um, he isn't here, but we are joined by Felicia Maroney, who is a good friend of mine and a listener of this podcast, and she has her own podcast, Seen Faces in Movies. Thank you for being here, Felicia. Yeah, it's really you so nice much. of you to guest host. Yeah, <laughs> How are no. you? <laughs> you don't have to thank me. I should be thanking you. I've been wanting to. You've always been In the been past, I've listened to. I've listened to every episode. Even oh my the God. movies that I um, sometimes I'll skip the ones like the starting if I do want mm. to watch a movie and I haven't seen it. And then if it's a horror movie, I will just listen to it because I don't care about the spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll listen to the episode. So I'm very happy to join for season seven. Yes. Yay! You've been very supportive. And mm -hmm. tell us a little bit. I mean, I mean, I know about your podcast, but for listeners, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about seeing faces in movies. Yeah, so it's essentially a podcast where it's a weekly podcast, but each month I focus on like a different director or a cinematographer. So this is a monthly series, and then I invite guests on to pick a movie within that artist, you know, filmography, and then I mm -hmm. let it be their choice, and then we'll discuss it. Um, but because I'm choosing the artist, chances are I love the movie too. So it's just yeah. been like a gush fest. Mm. Um, but it's just a celebration of where that film fits in that the filmography and where they were in their career as opposed to a breakdown of the mm -hmm. film. So cool. And sounds we, serious, but it's not. We chatted Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> so if anyone wants to yep. listen to us gush about that movie, you can listen to the Sunset Boulevard <laughs> episode. Um, mm -hmm. ha Felicia, have you always been a movie buff? I I guess so. Like both my parents are really big movie nerds. Nice. Um so it just was kind of inherent. I think all of us are like my siblings and I. I just took it to the nerdier level <laughs> of going to school for film and watching several movies a day. But mm -hmm. I think we're all like really big movie nerds. They just like different types of films that I mm -hmm. than I like. So yeah. Mhm. Mm who is who's the focus right now this month on the John the Cassavetes? Body. Your oh buddies. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my thoughts <laughs> that I've shared with Felicia. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, are we ready to get into this week's film? Let's do it. All yep. right. Nestled in the serene French Alps, among high trees and snowy landscape. There lies a chalet. Novelist Sandra Voiter, who is living there with her husband Samuel and son Daniel, is having a lively chat with an attractive female grad student interviewer. Suddenly, the interview is disrupted by a booming, peculiar sound. But this is not your average cacophony. It is, in fact, the recognizable beats of 50 Cent PIMP. <laughs> done as an <laughs> instrumental cover. As PIMP gets louder, we begin to question why Sandra's husband is so willing to disrupt his wife's one-on-one. -on -one. Could this be a sign of marital strife? Or does he simply love that song, as we all do? <laughs> but on this seemingly normal day, a body is found. Shortly after Sandra's interview, Samuel turns up dead death by fall. But this is not just a clear-cut case. There are questions surrounding Samuel's death, and fingers seem to be pointing at Sandra. In Justine Trier's critically acclaimed Anatomy of a Fall, we are plunged into Sandra's journey while her life, character, and morals are put on trial. The film harkens back to our favorite courtroom dramas while shaking up the genre and giving us a compelling roller coaster ride and a portrait of a marriage. 
Anatomy of a Fall weaves us in and out of the fabric of Sandra's life, but ultimately, it simply asks the question, did she do it? (laughs) Did she do it? (sighs) Let's get into it. It does ask that (laughs) question. Yeah. Yeah. And Felicia, thank you for for seeing a modern film. I know you <laughs> like the old timey films. Yes, um, I do. Very nice only, of you to step into the year twenty twenty three. Yeah. Only yeah. a few select people can get me to go out and watch a, new a modern film at the cinema. So But I feel like you You're like great. French movies. Yeah. Do. Oh yes. Yeah. So that yeah. was probably an an easier sell. It was. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we always start off our discussion with our first impression of the movie when we started it. Uh, So, Felicia, what was your first impression when you started Anatomy of a Fall? If you want to go into, you know, where you saw it, how you were feeling when you saw it, sometimes that influences our impression as well. Yeah, so I went to go see this with my partner, and we were the only two in the theater. Oh, wow. And we were in like recliner seats and I was like I'm taking my shoes off oh I always take my shoes off he was pretty disgusted (laughs) he pretended like he was disgusted but I was like I'm relaxing okay it's only two of us here yeah (laughs) so that was great and I love courtroom drama so I assumed Mm -hmm. I would like it's French as you said um and it starts off with kind of like the little pictures of Mm. or like stills essentially Mm -hmm. shots of the important parts that you're supposed to pay attention to throughout the story and I was like okay this is a little artsy I'm already down for the ride so <laughs> I was excited for it yeah. nice Sinclair well when the film starts and you see this beautiful chalet or house in the French Alps I immediately was like wow that would be nice um, <laughs> right the setting in this film a plus mm-hmm. and when you see Sandra being interviewed, I, I was trying to put together exactly what she does for a living and if she has a certain relationship with the interviewer. And she is responding to the questions in a strange way, but at the beginning of the film, I, I didn't really question it too much or think that was too odd. And that does come back later on in the film, but it's not something that I necessarily clocked right away. What I did notice was the blaring of Mm -hmm. the steel drum (laughs) p-i-m-p yeah and that is such a bold and strong choice yeah to uh, it's such a bold way to start the film and also i was like why isn't she stopping her husband like i would be so mad Mm. i'd be like please shut the f up Mm -hmm. what are you doing (laughs) <laughs> um, but she doesn't really stop him and she kind of cuts the interview short so that was weird at the beginning I was like something's going on there mm. yeah Helen well so I'm in Ottawa right now and I didn't necessarily anticipate that this wouldn't be super accessible because there's uh, for, for the most part in Toronto you can f- see a movie that you need to see for the most part um, but luckily there, this was playing at a very tiny, adorable theater called the Mayfair Theater. It was about a 40 minute walk from where I'm staying in Ottawa. And mm. I walked there on Monday night and it is just the cutest little independent theater. Mm-hmm. It's one screen. It's like it was opened in 1932 and it was, you know, initially, I think, uh, like a stage for like stage production. So it's got like, uh, like a little balcony and stuff. And it was just the cutest place and I was so happy that I happened to have to go there to see the movie because I probably wouldn't have done that otherwise and I was Mm -hmm. like I love nothing more than a little independent movie theater yeah it's you know movie theaters are my church so it's like stumbling upon like a really cute old church (laughs) for me (laughs) my place of worship yeah um but in terms of the movie actually starting Honestly, when I saw the blind child bathing the dog, I was like, I cannot with this. This is going to break my heart. I can't. Nothing bad can happen to this dog or this boy. 
there it was just so pure (laughs) it was so pure i was like no Mm -hmm. no it was like immediately like pulling at my heartstrings that relationship between the boy and the dog i was just like no 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 nothing bad please so yeah yeah, that's where i started well maybe we get into storytelling yeah um you know felicia you're a big fan of the courtroom drama Mm -hmm. um and justine triette cites anatomy of a murder as being a big influence uh for this movie i have seen that one her other one that she cites is compulsion which i have not seen but i feel like you have seen it yes Um, that's so funny because i was like this would make a great pairing with compulsion uh, yeah it's like a good good double feature Uh, but i like that this was a mix between a courtroom drama and a family drama Mm -hmm. this had Kramer versus Kramer in there there was marriage mm. story and it the storytelling does a good job of inviting us into both worlds into the courtroom and also into their family and into the dynamics of their marriage and I think that it does that really well it's kind of two genres in one for sure yeah. um how did you feel about having a lot of the marriage be the focus and like getting an insight into that and then bouncing back and forth between their life and also the courtroom. So I couldn't help but see similarities between this and the staircase. Oh, I know. Same. So for anyone who doesn't know, the staircase was initially a documentary and then there was also like a dramatization of the documentary of the real thing. Um, But in terms of the documentary, it was about an author named Michael Peterson, whose wife Kathleen died in 2001 and she fell down the stairs and he was eventually convicted of murder in 2003, but there was eventually a retrial and then he ended up entering an Alford plea, which is a a very weird thing. Um, Mm -hmm. But he got released from prison in in 2017, but he was bisexual, just Mm -hmm. like Sandra. Mm -hmm. He was an Mm -hmm. author like her. And I do think that they, there was um, like a dissection of his writing with his trial the same way there was with hers. And there was, you know, infidelity was questioned. Um, there, they also had s- a weird blended family situation where two of his daughters were actually adopted daughters from a woman who also fell down the stairs and died in Germany. Like, anyway, it's very, very <laughs> strange. Yeah. But I couldn't help but see the similarities with this. And I think that what was so interesting about the storytelling for this movie in particular is like, yes, it's a courtroom drama. It also felt a little bit like it was a documentary at times. Mm -hmm. And I think what it, it, it succeeded at was showing us the humanity and the sort of like things that get us obsessed with true crime. Mm -hmm. It did that in this movie, even though it was fictional. So focusing on the marriage, I think, is something that happens in those true crime documentaries of similar stories, right? Yeah. So I I think that it that was it was important to show that. Yeah. Here, and that's an infuriating watch, the staircase, because you truly are (laughs) like, did he do it? And that's how I felt in this one, where I I just she was so convincing the whole time. I was like, did she, she did she do this? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Felicia. Yeah. It's interesting with this because I think it's really important to have all the family stuff. And I think it utilizes the two and a half hour run yeah. quite well. I, I didn't feel it. And I usually would feel yeah. something that's over. Me too. 90 minutes, to be honest. But <laughs> um, same girl, same. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I couldn't believe when it was done. I was like, oh my God. And like, even the stuff with like, her lawyer and they mm-hmm. had a background too mm-hmm. and that could have felt forced or too much but I think it just added to the humanity of her mm. and it really made you question like did she do it or mm-hmm. not and I think it also kind of maybe depending on who you are forces you to pick a side and mm-hmm. I don't think either you know side is wrong or right um, mm-hmm. I know what I think and it was different than what uh, the person I went to go see the movie thought <laughs> uh, just from different life experiences and okay. what I related yeah. to in her 
right. or the other characters. Um, it's also just like seeing a mother. And so it was a lot. Right. But that's amazing because feeling that and having the different points of views, that's how a juror would feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Mm -hmm. you're being swayed by all these different things and you can't help but base your opinion on your own experiences and what you know to to be true in your own life. Uh, That's why, you know, the jury selection process is is so wild. Uh, Mm -hmm. By the way, I would I would never want to do that. I don't think it would be so exhausting. Yeah. Like I just watching this movie, it is so compelling and it feels Mm -hmm very riveting but what I loved about it is at the same time you do feel exhausted by the trial Mm -hmm. at the end and watching this I was like I don't think I could ever go through a trial like being a juror yeah I've always kind of wanted to yeah it would would be a really boring case yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) for sure um I wanted to mention having the protagonist be the suspect yeah. In a courtroom drama is a really refreshing take on this genre because normally in these types of films, you're following a lawyer and mm-hmm. he's usually a man, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. But because you're following a lawyer, their job is to get to the truth and you kind of rely on them to discover the truth. But when you have this unreliable main character and they're the suspect you still want the truth from them but you don't know if what you get in the end is the actual truth so whether or not you know obviously we're spoiling this but you know Mm -hmm. if if the character does get off they still have to live with the fact that everyone will always question if they did it or not Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know um yeah yeah i I did feel swayed to be on her side because she is our our main character and I had a feeling, you know, again I was I was also very swayed by the by Daniel, the son, and there was a point where I was like I don't care whether she did it or not, but she can't go to prison because this kid needs a parent. Like right. I actually just felt yeah. like no, sorry, I don't care. She can't she can't go to prison. You can't take his mom away too. No. I don't care if yeah. she's a murderer. You you almost want to be like, you know what? Good that she did it. You know, fine. Even if she did do it, it's whatever. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> but that is it's something too. Like that plays into people's perception of of people in real life who mm-hmm. are on trial and of characters, obviously, in movies. But like that was something that was swaying me as an audience member. Felicia, did you feel that the actual like evidence that was presented in this Mm. did that sway you one way or another no i feel like they were reaching well yeah especially with like the prosecutor actually scared me like he was good at his job he was great and i was like he would get me to admit to stuff that i had never done in my life i (laughs) i I murdered this person sure um (laughs) he's very intense but it's very, it's confusing with the, the child because I think that he goes through different things of, I think there's a point that he thinks that his mom did it. Oh, and, definitely. And I think there's a point where he's like, I don't want to lose my mom. Yeah. So is he purposefully misremembering things? Yeah. Or is he, you know, just being like, you know what, it's, I can't ha- lose both my parents. So mm-hmm. am I going mm-hmm. to say this and that to it? And I think it's just so interesting to have the kid be one that that actor is like insane, incredible, right. yeah, so good. I was like, yeah. oh my god, yeah. Um, but then also having him in his little background story of how he w- went blind, and just that also adds to the okay, he can't lose another parent because what happens to him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, and he's an unre- unreliable witness. Yeah. Two, because that's his mother. Also, he he is blind and he's a child. Yeah. So there's this suspense of, well, what's he, he going to do? And what does he actually know to be true? Mm-hmm. And another thing I thought was really interesting that added to feeling her frustration in the courtroom was that she's German and she couldn't speak yeah. French as well as... Yeah 
everybody else. And she's like in the French courtroom. And can you imagine not being able to fully explain yourself in the language that you're comfortable with? Yeah. And how that could get misconstrued and could affect the outcome. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Or even how you're perceived, you know, because Mm -hmm. people that speak different languages or have different cultures have certain social norms and certain ways of expressing emotion. And there's so many differences that if you're being judged on everything you do as a person and you're not even able to present yourself to appease, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. the people that you're trying to appease, (laughs) you know. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into performances now. Um, mm-hmm. So Sandra Hewler plays the character of Sandra, and she's worked with Justine before. Um, and Justine actually said that she wrote this with with Sandra in mind. I think that she is... She makes this movie as full as it can be mm-hmm. in term, in terms of us not knowing if she's guilty or not like she's she plays it incredibly well um and I'm sure you probably both read this but Sandra asked Justine I need you to tell me like did she do it or not Mm. and Justine was like uh you play it like she's innocent I want you to play it like she but she wouldn't tell her (laughs) because anyone would in that situation unless you want to go to jail like you would But I love that she didn't yeah. tell her because yeah. then there's no level of like duplicity or anything. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have the option to say, okay, I'm guilty, but I'm going to play innocent. It's just, mm-hmm. y- you're going to play innocent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Felicia, your thoughts on Sandra? <laughs> I mean, she's she's great, right? Like I could have just watched her the whole movie. Um and it is mainly her. She does carry it on her back, but I could have just watched her play it. I think it also helps that we don't, audiences don't know much about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she's essentially the counterpart to her would be Kate Blanchett, if we're going to yeah, be honest here. Like, yeah. But like with Kate Blanchett, because we know so much of her, despite the fact that she would obviously kill this role, you're going to think a certain way right off the bat because yeah. like this is Kate Blanchett playing this role this is another an actress you might have seen her and like Tony Erdman maybe you haven't mm. seen her at all this is the first time you've seen her uh you're automatically like I really don't know what the deal is here mm-hmm. because I don't have any background knowledge of her at all and I think that's to her advantage in this film and she's just so great to watch because I I don't know. I'm just so pro Sandra in this movie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I gotta say it. Like I'm her biggest fan. I really don't mm. care if she did it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel the same way. I was like, yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Team Sandra. Yeah, this is one of my favorite performances so far this year. Mm-hmm. She's so good and she's she's so believable that she has to be telling the truth. And if she's not, she's the world's best liar. But you know, at the same time, we don't know her. Uh, we don't know the level of rage and anger that she can reach. And she's just, she's so, she's so believable. And I, the scene with her husband when they do the fight scene is one of the best scenes I've seen this year. And it's one of the best mm-hmm. marriage fight scenes. Mm-hmm. And... It honestly reminded me of Marriage Story because how can you judge a person based on what they say in a fight, you know? Yeah. And the people that can hurt you the most is the ones you love sometimes. And, you know, in Marriage Story, he says, I wish you'd get cancer and die. (laughs) And, like, you just people can say the worst things to each other. And it doesn't Mm – your relationship and, and how you are in a fight doesn't necessarily mean you're a murderer. And she was so good in in that scene where you're like, well, everyone can get like that. But then at the same time, you're like, oh, she was really fucking mad. Maybe she did push him out. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like um, how long that scene was, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it feels like you really needed to see the beginning of it and how calm she is. Because I really that's when I. I had identified her with her most of the movie, but I was just like, 
the way she was sitting there just trying to diffuse and she was really trying yeah. to get out of it and she yeah, made yeah, so yeah. many outs until she was like okay now we're that's fighting. it i'm going in yeah 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 and i was like yep been there yeah <laughs> milo machado grainer who played daniel i thought was like a, a true gifted actor yeah like you can't teach yeah. that the way that he was acting in this movie especially for someone so young like he was really great I also was I was trying to find out if he does have sight if he is impaired sight wise but I couldn't find anything about that I think that he is but I'm also not a hundred percent yeah sure yeah but he gets that amazing moment that's usually delivered by the lawyer in a movie mm. it's that Mac- Matthew mm. McConaughey like a time to kill monologue it's it's the cl- like these cl- the closing thoughts by our you know our quote hero the lawyer right. I thought it was really interesting that she gave the son that that moment in the movie mm-hmm. that would normally go to the lawyer mm-hmm. yeah and the only time I've ever seen like a really well there's a lot of great child performances but one that was like super raw like that was another uh french film called panette and the little girl was like four years old i don't know how Mm. she managed to pull off that performance but with this i think that he was so good the other the adult actors are feeding off of it too Mm. and we're like Mm -hmm. okay we can treat you equally for you know Mm. lack of a better term because mm. sometimes the way they're talking to and I know it's obviously in the script, but sometimes the way they're talking to him, I'm like, you know, he's a child. I right? know. So, I know. I was like, <laughs> be delicate. <laughs> like, just relax. Yeah. We don't yeah. need to be calling, getting angry, but like, oh, do you even remember it that way? And yeah. It's like, sir, he just saw his dad dead. Yeah. His dad's <laughs> dead and like, he's a kid. Like, how? Uh, yeah. 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 I need to talk about Snoop, the dog. I know. This is some of the best dog acting I I have ever seen in a movie. I was completely blown away. And I need to say, I've seen bad dog acting Mm -hmm. before. (laughs) When a movie Mm -hmm. doesn't have the budget to properly use a trained dog. Like, I've seen low-budget movies where the dog is supposed to be, like, snarling and mean and, like, a zombie. And it's, like, wagging its tail... (laughs) looking so happy and and me being like that's the worst dog acting I've ever seen this is the best animal acting and Mm -hmm. I needed to look into this because I couldn't I was like how did they do this so it was a lot of training the dog had a trainer there was a little bit of special effects and then there was like a vomit bag kind of Mm. like how a um how a person an actor would use like a vomit bag in a throw up scene Mm. but snoop was played by messy the dog yeah um seven-year-old border collie and he won at can because this film won the palm door at can the dog won the palm dog the palm dog award for outstanding is that a real thing or did they it, just make it up <laughs> i think it's a real well i think it's i don't know if maybe he was the first award or they've done this but it's it's like given unofficially mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but they gave him the palm dog and Aww. he had to train for so long and lie down and like put his tongue out and i hated that scene so much yeah <sighs> i was in shock Aww, it, but I that it, that's a testament to messy to the messy. dog's acting yeah oscar for yeah. messy um, Felicia, you I, are an animal lover. I, how did you tolerate that scene? Because <laughs> not well. Yeah. But you, you saying all that stuff made me feel a little bit better because I was like, "There's no way they actually made this dog vomit because that's no. not legal." Well, I, I, <laughs> I was think... like, "I don't care if it's a French film. It's not that's that." That's animal abuse. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there has been in movies, not now really, oh, yeah. but in the past, there's been so much mm-hmm. animal abuse that when you watch it, you can't help but think like, right. oh, oh. Yeah. Well, maybe we get into technical. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mentioned this in storytelling, but I loved the times where we had handheld camera and it really did feel like we were watching a documentary mm-hmm. or like the camera would like go back and forth between people as if it was a someone trying to capture this in real time Mm -hmm. I thought that that was really effective 
And one of the things that Justine said in one of these interviews that I watched in terms of the courtroom is that she didn't want it to feel like an American courtroom drama. Like she wanted it to be, I think, it, it, messier. <laughs> and it did feel that way. Like it did. And there was a part of me that was like, is this just what courtrooms are like in Europe? Or is there liberties being taken with the formalities in this movie in particular? I wasn't sure. Well, it didn't seem as like sensationalized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In this. Yeah. Yeah. I liked, I also liked the handheld stuff. I thought Mm -hmm. that was great. And just like, even like the following up the stairs, uh, Mm, the scenes, or even when the camera goes up as we're kind of trying to trace where this music is coming from. Right. Um, and just not. And like, it's obviously you just see the laptop open and it's like an empty space. And that was great. But the courtroom scenes were also, I was wondering the same thing as Helen of like, is this how it is there? Um, or is it taking liberties? Because it's very kind of stuffy. Mm-hmm. Like, they all seem very close to each other. Yeah. And just the layout is not what we're used to. And the camera kind of just like oscillates back and forth between people and kind of circles around. And I found that she. Sandra was often shot from below. So you're looking mm-hmm. up at her quite a bit, which sometimes gave her a very menacing look when it needed to give her a menacing look or it made her seem more, you know, angelic at times. So and she was standing. I just, yeah. She was standing quite a bit. And the way she was standing uh, and the clothing she was wearing, I don't know. I just think it was great. Um, even just, but like the set locations of that chalet. Yeah, and they kept talking about it how it was like a downgrade, and I was like, "What?" I know. (laughs) From what? This is stunning. (laughs) I was like, "I would kill for this." Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was some shots too that was the point of view of the dog, which I thought was really interesting Mm -hmm. because the dog Mm -hmm. was technically Daniel's eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that was really really cool and I don't know I just felt like this didn't have a ton of bells and whistles technically and that was what made it really good like it it really kept tight on the characters and put that focus cinematography I didn't find to be distracting it didn't take us away from the stories and the characters and I like that I think it worked really well with this this type of film also, the music was really well placed. I, it's such an odd mm-hmm. choice to pick 50 Cent, that instrumental version of 50 Cent. Um, but I think she originally wanted to to use classical music, but that's been so overused in in film. And then she really wanted Jolene, Do- Dolly Parton's oh, really? Jolene, oh, yeah. but couldn't get the yeah. rights. And then the next huh. pick was like, oh, okay, 50 Cent. Hmm. <laughs> And it ended up well, being Well, how did perfect. you feel about that? Well, Like I, when you first heard it? I was like, this is such a bold choice. And then later it does come around with, there's a lot of talk about misogyny and also her emasculating him. And I think that that song and him blaring that song works really well with what's going on in their marriage. Yeah. It's a good technical choice in terms of, of music. Should, okay, should we go for the big reveal? Okay, but if this <laughs> is the big reveal, like, do we think she did it yeah. or not? Because, she, yeah. if, you know, I'm I'm hoping that if you're listening to this, you've watched the movie and we're not mm-hmm. spoiling this for you. But she isn't convicted of the crime. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think she did it. Yeah. I don't think she did it either. Oh, no. I don't think she did it either. Okay, there we go. But, but would you're... we be okay if she did do it? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm like, if she did it, I also don't think she should go to prison. <laughs> yeah. I, I sat with me for like a few days where I was like going through all the scenarios. I was like, listen, mm-hmm. this is probably what happened. And I think it was genuinely, I don't think he killed himself. I think it was an accident. I think he fell. Mm-hmm. They might have had an argument. Yeah. And he tripped and fell, but I don't think she did it. Yeah. But was she even there? Is that, that's my main question. Was she there when he fell? Yeah. But. Oh. uh, I don't think he was a bad guy that he deserves to die, but I would have to support her, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) she did. You know, I do think that her having the nap with PIMP blaring, I don't know if I believe that, but the, the blood spatter 
once the blood spatter analysis got in there, I was like, okay, like she doesn't feel like he was bludgeoned. Like mm-hmm. it was the blood spatter looked like he had hit the the shed. Yeah. And they also like just in terms of technically like they didn't have a murder weapon. They mm-hmm. didn't have enough evidence to convict her. Yeah. Like it just it really wasn't the prosecution's case wasn't very strong. It like, wasn't. It was honestly all just people's opinion on yeah. I- is she a good woman or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and I think that's kind of the point. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um I'm also just but. so grateful that this was a French film and not an American film because I feel like if it was an American film, at the very end we would like see the murder weapon like hidden, hidden. Or, there or like would be a you know little twist at the end. We'd yeah. get a reveal at the end, or she would admit to it or something. And I'm like, thank God it was ambiguous. Like yes, I I was so grateful for that. Even though it's frustrating, and you you want to know like as a human, mm-hmm. I was so grateful that it it nothing was revealed. <laughs> but think of uh, little Daniel. You know, mm, do you think yeah. little Daniel one day will look back on this and be like, ah, oh, mom, did, did, did mom do I it? think he's going to question it for the rest Forever. of his life. Forever. Like, I feel bad yeah. for him. And, yeah. you know, just publicly, she'll always be mm-hmm. known as yeah. the, you know, yeah. the pusher. And there will always <laughs> be people who think she did it. Oh, yeah. 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 I was immediately like, they need to move. They just need to leave the country. Yeah. yeah. Them because <laughs> she needs to change her be- name. Like, yeah. back to Germany. Back to Germany. Or London. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's like let's wrap this up. Yeah. Um, What's the last word on uh, anatomy of a fall? Sinclair, why don't you go? Last word for me. This is a very compelling film. There's fantastic performances by human and canine. <laughs> Check this out. You know, this one, the Palm Door. But it is not being submitted by France. What? To the Oscars. Why not? I don't know. They're submitting this other movie with Juliette Binoche, um, The Taste of Things, which is like not as seen Chocolat. or popular <laughs> as as this movie. So I don't know. I feel like. Well, it could still get a nomination just as a film, right? Like it's just not going to be no- submitted as like the national the film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Um, that's a shame, but I think that, that is a shame. you know, word of mouth, a lot of people mm-hmm. are seeing this film. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. not in the theater Felicia went to, <laughs> yeah. she put her feet up, but there was a fair amount of people in my theater. Yeah. Good. Same. There's a decent yeah. amount. So that's promising. Yeah. Very, yeah. very good film. Yeah. Felicia, what's your last word on anatomy of a fall? Um, well, first I do know why they're not submitting it. Uh, oh, it's because yeah. the director criticized the French government. So oh, okay, well, that'll do it. <laughs> so Silencing they're like, women. yeah, no, we don't like you anymore. <laughs> Silencing so women. <laughs> I do, but I guess my last word would be that it would be, an, as much as I like, you know, the, we all know the Oscars really don't mean anything, but we still watch them. And it would be a shame if it wasn't nominated for something because I think that everything in this deserves to win be nominated but just to have a story by a woman about a woman with such strong performances and such strong writing would be uh you know remiss to not have it out there for more people to gain access to it Mm -hmm. so i'm glad that it's gotten the distribution that it's gotten but i hope it gets more outside of because I think it's a movie film, so it'll just stay on movie. So I hope more people get to see it. Oh, okay. So it's going to be streaming on movie then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, Helen, what's your last word? Uh, last word for me is that I really enjoyed this movie a lot. I think that it is very well written, well directed, well acted. I encourage people to go and see it. And I, I hope we see it at the Oscars somewhere, mm-hmm. somehow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Felicia. For yeah, thank you so much. Being here it was a real gals night. Oh yeah, uh, and it should be for this movie. It should be. That's true. Um, <laughs> why don't you let everyone know how they can, you know, follow the follow your podcast or follow you? Hmm. I mean, I'm on all the platforms that you would, you know, use to listen to a podcast. Um, I've also got a website seeing faces in movies.com so 
that'll have all the links to it but typically i'm more active on like instagram or twitter your ed letterboxd oh yeah my personal letterbox yes <laughs> but like that's sometimes i'm also like wary of letting people know because they're like you watch a lot of movies like <laughs> i'm like no i don't <laughs> my latest so, movies no yeah. shame yeah yeah you can find it linked somewhere <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. That was a lot of fun. You had yeah, some thank you insight. so much. Nice to have Dude. you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's great. Um, well, this has been another episode of Talk Movie to Me. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our email is talkmovietome at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram at talkmovietome. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And if Edison remembers to do it, you'll be able to find our episodes <laughs> on YouTube at Talk Movie to Me Podcast. Uh, that's just a little dig at Edison because he's not here. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> I'm Helen. <laughs> I'm Miss Sinclair, and we'll see you next week.